Hi, all. My name is Sean McGarrigal, and I'm here to attempt to encapsulate this entire conference in a couple of minutes. Uh, so please don't be too critical <laughs> of my thinking <laughs> or this poem, if you can. Um, so I'm trying to keep in my mind, while I'm writing this, uh, being hit by a blackboard eraser in grade school, or teachers dressing up like Queen Elizabeth I, or the ideas of persuasion and teaching those who come from various backgrounds and following various protocols while teaching and speaking with students, etc. So here it goes. I come from a family of teachers based mostly out of Toronto. Don't hold the Toronto thing against me. My Aunt Kathy taught grade two for eons. And in my early teenage years, she dragged me into her class on my days off to help teach timetables or distract the kids by being silly. I am silly. In fact, my niece calls me the silly. <laughs> so be forewarned. My Aunt Trish and my Uncle Pete taught high school. And for them, I was always the guineaest of the guinea pigs. My Uncle Paul taught business to business teachers around the globe at the university level. So you could say that teaching is in my blood, like hemoglobin, like poetry, like my need to go to wine country, often, <laughs> or having a soft spot for people who might be considered soft spots, or kids with hard edges that remind me that perfect teeth is a luxury and that not all lunches are created equal. Today, I've been thinking about what I might be able to do for our kids. Much in the same way, 15 years ago, I wondered what I could do for the people of the downtown east side of Vancouver. I've had the privilege to teach creative writing in grade schools and universities. I think there is something to be said for treating school engagement sort of like a snow day. Now bear with me. Or as my friend Anise puts it, Bear with me. Grrr. Wrap this idea up like the snuggliest of blankets, like this is the, the side of the vacation in Hawaii. When many of us were young, many moons ago when recess was all bare-boned, sports and penny candies, a snow day was filled with laughter, shoveling, snowball fights, and snowmen. We'd have hot chocolate and a wispy promise of a shortened school week or an opportunity to choose our own adventure for a day. For that brief day or for lucky two days, we were silly and joyous and filled with more hope than Obama's first campaign <laughs> or the first time someone told us we were good at something we loved. I remember sharing toboggans, plastic strip slides, and if we were lucky, somebody's giant tube. Do you remember the giant tube? racing down as fast as our imaginations could take us down those steep hills and public parks. The point being that it was ribcage bending, pulse pulsing, hope that surrounded us completely. And we weren't thinking about the Cold War or our parents' financial woes or whether that fall we had two weeks ago would leave a scar for the rest of our lives. And today has left me wondering if we can make classrooms more like snow days. Thinking about this, critically. Maybe it's that we need to be more accessible, realize who someone is, whatever gender they identify might be their own, whatever their cultural history may be. Who someone is is not just as unique as a snowflake, but something we need to focus on, storytell about, perhaps creatively integrate into what they study and how they study. What if we focus our curriculums on what interests our children outside the classroom. Maybe give Titus to those youth that love Fortnite or Halo. Have students act out Romeo and Juliet during puberty. What if we had each student choose a text to study in a given year? It wouldn't have to be full novels or plays or novellas, but a section that appeals to them that they would like to share with their classmates. They would be building snow forts based on the stories that they and their friends love and love to share. 
We would be sharing stories like every classroom was a campfire or a dinner table. Maybe they would feel less isolated and alone. Maybe bullying would slow. And the fears that fester through isolation would be given a couple of sociological speed bumps. I say all of this knowing maybe our teachers merely need the ability to build snow forts of their own. That one size fits none educational machine has been broken long enough that teachers will finally be given the opportunity to teach the students what the students need rather than what the Doug Fords, Donald Trumps and such learned 30 years ago when they were buying their way through school. Maybe we're rushing them through the adult, their adolescence forgetting how long lunch or recess felt like when we were that age. Forgetting that life is most unencumbered when we are snowflakes or choose your own adventure books. Forgetting that their stories are just as valuable to them as Shakespeare or Homer. We just need to give them license to play. Thank you. Thank you.